This was a dangerous mission. On a scale of one to 10, the IED threat in Afghanistan was a 10. Ambushes were happening frequently, often multiple ambushes on the same patrol. I think what, what happened with the Canadian mission is they didn't realize what the size of the insurgency had become. Is when they started going out into the districts outside of Kandahar City in 2006, the amount of combat they started doing was intense, far more than we were told. Our first half hour outside of the war, and we're, we're getting shot off at. If you sustain casualties, you keep moving and you deal with the casualties in the vehicle, but always there are people firing back. For all the successful convoys that have gone out and nothing's have happened, you just hope that you're not rolling the dice there and having your number come up. Nobody leaves Kandahar without seven of their nine lives gone. We really couldn't use roads at all without deliberately clearing ahead of us and searching for these, uh, these roadside bombs. We would need to get our forces from our port operating bases to wherever they needed to operate. Some of the equipment pretty well was deemed that it wasn't safe. It was a standard civilian cabin you'd see on our construction site. So we know how bulletproof uh, that glass is, so we started putting steel on it. We were the number one target in Afghanistan, and we were able to get rid of the IED threat because we were making our own routes. We were getting vehicles like the labs and stuff in the fighting positions. We would send patrols of uh, field engineers forward to clear some of the other obstacles. Two, one! The greatest part about being a Canadian soldier in, in Kandahar is that you're Canadian first. Canadians generally want to help people. That was what our job was. We had to go and protect the Afghan population. We had to protect them from the Taliban. We were about to be involved in a massive fight. The purpose of Op Medusa, to liberate Pajmul of enemy incursion. All the civilians had left the area, and that made it real easy. In one form or another, the words were passed. If it moves, it dies. It's just bad guys. Complete enemy territory. These were professional soldiers. I wanted them to know that they should rely on their training, that they needed to rely on each other. I made no illusions that I'd be going into that and it'd be a song and dance. They had enough time to prepare their defensive positions. They were daring us to come and get them. We see them crossing, we see them breach the enemy bank, and they're going in. The intent is to, to take out the white school because that's, that's the enemy stronghold. Nothing that we had could detect. They were there with such a massive force. The engineer assets were in the front. We suddenly start hearing gunshots. And then we start hearing the radio chatter getting louder and louder and faster. I remember the lav went down and then back up and then we heard an explosion. Then our lav got hit. The turret just explodes. The bustle bin just explodes. Everything exploded after that. Like there was not a gun not firing. Yeah! Firing from three sides, RPGs, Chinese rockets, medium weapons fire, small arms fire, everything. And that's when I got my first call. Hey, go in and get that lab. The pot field was eight feet high, maybe 10 feet high. Everything was firing back, but you couldn't see it. So you couldn't see anything firing back. Everything's on fire, man. Like everything was on fire. It was crazy. We knew what was going on. We knew guys were getting hurt. We knew guys were getting killed. But words come out, mass has wounded KIA. For a fraction of a second, I can see the ground exploding closer and closer to me. I think they just strafed our own guys. Grab this, grab that, grab the stretcher, get over here, move. And like, there's people just in pain. It's something as soldiers that we know we're gonna have to face. I think we can do it well because it's an absolute necessity. I trusted those people with my life. I'm alive because of my friends. There's no way you'll leave Kandahar the same as when you went in. I was young, basically said, yeah, let's do it. Like, I'll go, let's go dig some holes out in Afghanistan. Overseas, a good day is no one was hurt. No one was killed. You would never describe a good day here in Canada in those same terms. <laughs>